one other story. If you have a watch on the on the oscillograph, you see the lila out. Now it comes. Press in. Yellow drives in with a normal signal. Could that be the first dead counter on machines? There is no mechanical interruption in the way. Look, it's working perfect. How we can fix this problem? <laughs> I have an idea. And well, I think so. It's a dead counter that I found out. Now we must analyze how this electronic is working and then I can do maybe something against this problem or issue. At the Grundig CD11 I have the problem with the tray. The tray is going out and then the motor spins anymore because the reason is that, that, the, uh, that the program what controlled the motor out um, is stopping to work. Now I came to the idea if this can repeat every time for the going out so I take a microcontroller and in the last days I write a small program what will fix this issue. So <laughs> that takes me a, a couple of days because I'm not so perfect in programming <laughs> <laughs> but I found out, here's my little program, that I can initialize everything and a timer. I initialize a timer and uh, repeat them cyclic, all 10 milliseconds. Um, I go here and uh, I'm waiting an interrupt, run to cursor. It's 10 milliseconds and 116 microseconds. I'm initializing a um, uh, a timer that repeats all 10 milliseconds and then after this it waits uh, interrupt from external pin. Um, I will send the pin from this processor what's making this mistake out. <laughs> I think it's a dead counter but uh, in 1995 nobody knows what is a dead counter. Uh, they're making the machine defect and um, I think so. I can fix this issue with this small program and with a microcontroller. In our case we are using a microcontroller, the type is an AT, AT328P. This is a 8-bit microcontroller and this 8-bit microcontroller I print out. Um, I'm designing in, here is a input uh, fr from one, um, ah, here is the output. To close and output to the open motor. This is uh, going to a H bridge. I will show you this. I'm sorry, I will show you this. Here we have two interrupts: the interrupt zero and the interrupt one on PD two, pin four, PD three, pin five. Also, I check up the switch and switch position. Here we have one. On PD4, I use this also as an interrupt, but uh, I'm doing this over timeout. Um, on the output side, we have here these are two outputs. These are three inputs. Uh, on the output side, we have here uh, the overpin means oscillograph. I uh, put a measurement oscillograph here. Then a blue one LED, a white one LED, green one, yellow, and the red one LED, with all the same. Um, Seeing here a, a base trans, a resistor, here we have an NPN transistor and the light diode, the LED, with a current limited resistor. This is here. We don't do that at 20 milliampere like the Chinese with the blue LED. Uh, they kick out in the eye. We do that with a normal current, <laughs> 2 or 3 milliampere, and this is more than enough. We do in the calculation. 
at a later time. We take a blue one LED and doing a measure with the diode tester. In this old meter we have 3.1 volt as a testing um, voltage and we tested this. Uh -huh. Nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> and here, oh, it's a light. And you can see it's on the light and 2.522 volts. That means this is the breakthrough voltage. 2522. I wrote it down. I said blue. 2.522 volts. Okay. And I do that with all the diodes what I need here with all my colors. After all we writing the things down, the blue with 2522 volts, the white with 2.549 volts, green 1.882, yellow 1.856 volts and the red one with the lowest with 1.777 volts. I make a list now in the computer and we will see how much a resistor we need for each diode. And now I'm sitting on my computer and building uh, the making the list with a blue, white, green, yellow and red LED and taking out with a 2 milliampere, 3 milliamperes, 4 and 5 milliamperes. Uh, if you have 2 milliamperes the resistor is higher because the current is more limited. Uh, on the blue LED we have 389 ohms, but the 389 ohms not exist in a real serious cheap resistor. Also we have with 5 mA we have 156, so we would like to give a 150 ohms that we have. On the bench we have here now the, um, the list I printed out and we have a search 260 and 250 that sounds good it's around 270 we're taking two resistors of 270 ohms and these are the two and we're taking 470 it is near the same 500 is 400 is it's 470 ohms yeah 270 ohms here, 470 here. Uh, you have a watch here, look, 470 ohms. Uh, so we're taking three of them because we have three diodes. And this three of them we put here. And um, now we have the LED. We have the LED resistors to build up the electronic here is uh, the, the LEDs. Now we should have found out the transistors, they uh, should switch the, the LEDs. I have here two packs. Yes, <laughs> it's quite different for me to read this because it's too small. So I need this transistor tester. I bend a little bit the pins. You can see that. Banded pins on one transistor. Put, insert it here uh, in this tester. This is a multi tester. It costs like a five or six dollars. Start it and what's happened? Oh, it's an NPN transistor. You can see this. It's an NPN transistor. On one is the collector, on B. Uh, is number two and three is the E. Mm -hmm. CBE. CBE. We notate CBE and it's the body is like this. <laughs> Very easy, huh? CBE. <laughs> 
one, two, three, CPE. We'll build up now uh, a resistor here and the diode and the transistor and the base resistor. This is our plan what we would like to build and with this transistor is the MPN, the row is going outside. Here is the E, here is the C and here is the B. Yeah. Now we must insert the LEDs. <coughs> the first was the, the blue one. And look, you see the, the pins, one is longer, the longer is the plus. We insert the plus here on the fourth hole, put it in. You can see this. And then we take the, the resistor, this 270 ohms, put it in line so we can solder the uh, solder it point to point. And then we take the, the resist uh, the transistor, and this should be uh, collector base emitter. This transistor looking to the left. You can see it? Oh, it looks to the left here. Here's the flat side on this side. On the left is the flat side. That means collector base emitter. And <coughs> we do that. <laughs> I insert the next diode, but I make uh, with the double cut file. I file it, yeah, <laughs> because the diode's too fat. <laughs> and now, <laughs> after this procedure, they can uh, um, stay one to the next door, second hole, one left, one uh, the next, and so on, and. Take this 270 ohm resistor, put it here, and take the next transistor in the same direction. We do that now with all these diodes and all these resistors. The next color is um, <coughs> not yellow, huh? it's yellow, white, green, green. The next one is green and <clears throat> yellow and so on and red these are our information leads we need that for our special tuning kit for the CD11 from Grundig this is our new system this is the ejector. <laughs> you can open and close it with this <laughs> small controller, what I built in. And we solder it. We must solder it. But it should be stand up in a row. Not like a cow's, like here. It should be stand up in a row. Three hundred and seventy degrees, and so to the first pin, second pin, third pin, that, and this pin. Now I built in the the diodes: blue, white, green, yellow, and red. And this resistor, diode resistor, and these transistors here. It's not important if the diode is here and the resistor is here. Uh, that's not important because the current is floating over there. From plus here over the transistor, over the emitter to the ground. Here's the ground. Here's zero volt. What we 
need is this base resistor and this base resistor is high impedance Oh, focus, you can see that it's a um, brown, black, orange coated it's an old coat and this resistor we put in for each for each transistor to limit the base current it should be not high so I would like to build this in doing this and uh, putting in here I hope so this is viewable uh, now I solder this and I must solder it on both sides ah. and now it's very I must fill it <laughs> there. So looks like good look. Here we have the connection. <laughs> My hands are shaking, huh? These are the nerves. So I built this in and then we can uh, make the next step. We insert the processor. I mean, it's not a processor, it's a microcontroller. Uh, the, the, the difference between a controller and a processor is that a processor has an operation system. It's not a must, but it is so. And a controller has only one task. It's a hard-coded program in, in memory, in the flash memory. Um, yeah, that's the big difference. Controllers are for washing machines or video recorders, CD players, etc. Uh, microprocessors more uh, for sophisticated um, uh, usage like uh, a modern smart TV or your smartphone or your PC. Yeah, There you have an operation system on it. In this sequence I would like to show you how I installed the um, L78L03 this is this small part and it's a stabilizer um, <laughs> looks like a transistor but it's a stabilizer for 3 volts and uh, there is the power in voltage in and ground as reference and voltage out um, I make a connector 6 connector put it here and um, here is my processor this is a microcontroller, a small one, and I have a socket here. Oops. <laughs> um, I would like to install the socket first. A little bit place. Mm. And um, we must hold this here with the hand by fingers also, or here with this knipex. I hold it here and would like to solder it it's it's near here you can see and on the other side now it should be hold this is correct in place let's have a watch and um, it seems to be correct in place so we solder it right here One row after the other, and here. I hope so. It's <laughs> it's fast enough because time is money, <laughs> but not with this reparation. That cost me now uh, programming time for days or so. It's not a whole day, but um, near a whole day and that was not really fun to make the program because this pro uh, this controller have other um, other registers 
and you must talk with other uh, commands to these registers <laughs> like out and out is reduced to uh, 63 addresses or so I mean who have this idea <laughs> I don't know uh, I can show you this if you are interested in that please write to the command if you have some questions or if you would like to build also this electronic I can do, load it up at github it's no problem oh, or we can make a print <laughs> for next reparation for crazy running CD players and so on so now we insert this I know well static problem or stuff like this but this is not so not so problematic uh, yeah you can see <laughs> it's a it's a little bit work and I insert here also this um, this connector for building in this uh, and connecting this to this uh, connector for interrupt one interrupt two and so on and um, this is what I made now I'm also soldering this here uh, takes oops I think so I need this place to be hold it here uh, hold in place please hold in place <laughs> it's not so it's critical that stand plump <laughs> you see I'm soldering the points uh, solder joints in one in one part and it's okay looks like good six joints in one <laughs> yes well it's not perfect but watch else this uh, the problem is that this copper uh, PCB is a little bit old yeah that uh, that the solder don't hold in all the holes I cleaned it up but uh, watch else <laughs> it's a little bit complicated to tell now we insert the no we need a we need a capacitor I found one out a small pack you can read it with a 1500 pieces of radial Elkos I take out two uh, this is from LC LCSC come we bought it in uh, every time 1500 2000 or 5000 pieces for reparation that we re repair in the factory and I take a I take a lot plus look <laughs> important thing is that we have here a plus and a minus it's 25 volts and this uh, you can see the tiny 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 focus where is my focus I hope so you can see it it's a small 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 capacitor we put it in here and I think uh, we install it I solder it here on this point and lift it up also I saw the, the other side and now we must connect it to the plus but where is the plus um, we defined it uh, the first one is the plus I think it's okay oh it's very hot ouch <laughs> and I cut it first mm. cut it first so here is the plus and solder it the second I can uh, kick also here aha uh -huh. <laughs> now the print is uh, losing the, the the pin super this is that what I don't want but okay it's not nice but what should I do mm. desolder it 
we must solder it here and on this point and connect it here. Here is the out. The out need also a stabilized capacitor. Uh, normal you must have a 100 nanofarad. This is written in all the data sheets, not in all, but uh, in a lot of, because this can run into toggle. Uh, and um, that means the suppression for the toggling is um, made with the thing that you install um, a capacitor here nearby. It must be so short as possible. And this is the first what we're gonna do. And this is the second for the for the ground. We connect it here. We must make a cut. Cutting the leads. Mm -hmm. So we cut it and we must solder it here and here. And this should be work. Solder the pin here, solder it here to hold in place, and solder it here, and solder the the plus, the output. And now we must make a capacitor between here and here, between the output and the ground. This should be 100 nano, and I'm searching this 100 nano. Here comes the power supply from 5 volt to 3.3 or 3, volt, uh, 3 volts for this processor. For the, it's not a processor, it's a microcontroller. I install during this time the blue and the white LED here and uh, it's, it's important to have this. Uh, I'm sorry, the microphone is on the floor. <laughs> I must put it here. And I install it now here, uh, but this is not correct exact. It's not 100, uh, 100 um, uh, nanofarads, it's only 47 nanofarads. But I think um, in, my, in my situation it's okay. <laughs> I don't have another one. I have a one in SMD, but um, hmm. That we need for the for the processor. Uh, I sold it here. I'm sorry. Here. Here I should solder. Here. It's here. And here. So. The effect is uh, the effect is working because this only uh, making um, the regulator not to swing in a higher frequency. It uh, compressed this uh, startup to swinging this. Um, now we have here the power supply, little tiny power supply <laughs> in five volt out three or three point three volts, and here we build up the the thing. Two resistors, 15 kilo ohms, uh, and these are the transistors. But I must searching the um, the resistor for the 270 ohms. Uh, 270 ohms. Here we are. And we take two, and it seems to be going empty. But this is only for kit to build uh, some things up on a on a breadboard. You see. <laughs> you have all values here. Zero, uh, 10 high zero, 10 high 10, 100, 1000 and so on. And um, here are the values. 1, 1 1.2, 1.5, 1.8 and so on. Uh, it's in the, in the order of R12 or so. We take that away. Take the uh, the resistors, bend them, and would like to build them in. Mm, we build them in. The uh, the breakthrough Q, uh, voltage is the same than the other big blue and the other white one. It's also 
uh, 2.522 and 2.549 volts. Yeah, we must hold this here, bend them back, bend them back, and solder them. This is that what we're gonna do or want to do. Uh, the print itself is a very old print. Oh, and here we have this, here we have that. Okay, I'm so the fat bo boys on it. Now we must cut it. Cut away, cut away. You see, this is a magnetic. I don't know why this is magnetic. It's her. I remember it was not magnetic, but now it is magnetic. Hmm. You can see. Here are the the tiny LEDs. This is a three millimeter, and this is a five millimeter LED. Now we put in the transistors, and like to make it happen that we can also monitor the input from the interrupts. These are the two tiny LEDs. They watch at the other processor and the other processor gives the commands. I think so it's not it's not perfect but okay. That will work. Now after a while of working I finished this board and uh, you can see the controller is in the middle, mm, the transistors of here and here. Here are the external interrupts where the other processor commands the tray drive to open and close. Open and close are different. I think blue is open and white is close. These uh, two LEDs are uh, watching the switch. The switch is on here, the blue one input. If the switch is coming, uh, so the so the information go inside this. Then here is uh, open is green. Drive in, uh, drive out is yellow and green, and drive in is red and yellow, and close is red. These are the positions what I would like to make, and. I hope so. On the other side, I must also insert a hundred nano <laughs> capacitor here. Uh, it's a failure from my side, and I must connect the the power supply here. Aha! This is also missing, huh? Power supply here and here. Okay, let's do that. And I would like to open up this. Uh -huh. Here is my microphone. And mm, power supply is failing. That means two wires are going here and here. I hope so. You can see that if I'm doing this. Okay, black one is soldered, red one is soldered. Red one is here, um, black is here, black is here. We're doing now the SMD rework. Here is the SMD, where it is, here it is. You can see that. This is the SMD part. It's a little bit little. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, and this? We must position on the plus and on the minus, and it's very easy to do this. It's like this. Look, uh, here's a plus and minus, and I position it here, not falling in the hole. It's like here, and we must connect it here. And this side we must hold him and must connect him here. So, 100 nanofarads are for the decoupling of the noise on the power supply. You can see that maybe here.
focus. Oh, you see my dirt fingernails, but focus, 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 go back, go back, go back. Uh -huh. Maybe you see that now here. Here it is. This position. You see the the capacitor here. <laughs> I must um, desolder or de <laughs> unisolated the the thing here. Look at this. Okay, I can cut it. It's no problem. I cut it, and I would like to wire it here. It's the switch. This super thing is the switchy, switchy, switchy. So. Super. This is okay. That went good, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so what I would like to do is now I would like to drill here a hole. And what is this? This is interesting. What happened with my drilling machine? This is a super made in, I don't know, in China, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. Okay, okay, okay. That's my position. And now I must clean up here with the vac. Well, hmm. I finished this project now with the programming the AT328 Mega and um, the dead counter from the CD player is now obsolete. I check it out. Let's have a look here. The red LED means um, that um, the tray is inside because at the start the processor don't know where the tray is. It's outside or inside. It must be initialized first. Blue means there is um, a shifter that recognizes the switch on the end and on the other end because it's only one shifter. If you go out, oh, I pressed the wrong button. Oh, I must switch it on or what? What did it? What happened? I must reset all, reset it. So go out and ends. Green means the the tray is out, uh, and this means the white one means that the shifter is detected as zero and one in the end, and this detects FF in the end. You go in, zack and initialize and we go to play and unbelievable huh <laughs> this CD11 is saved from the trash and I bought it for 41 euros at eBay it's a high-end machine and with this special module what I programmed I write a program and to fix up this parse wide modulation that came out from the um, from the controller from the motherboard, I think it's a dead counter. We fixed it. You can see, zack, and in, zack. Now I must build all this in inside the CD player, and then it works perfect. Yeah. You can see. Other number. <laughs> Very funny, huh? <laughs> Does the controller save this wrong operation from the original controller? Because the tray is going only to this wide out and then it stops with a pause wide modulation on the uh, on the output.
Yellow means uh, the tray is in move. Yellow and green out. Now it's out. Green means out. In and stop. Zack. You see, my program works correct. So I show you now the the test. It's open. The tray. Put the CD in. It's close. Zack. And we press to play. Music is coming. Sound came from the speaker. <laughs> super. <laughs> it's so super. I like this CD player. I save his life. Oh, yeah. Super. This was the Grundig CD11 Fine Arts series player and I repaired it through the problem or to the, to the issue about the built-in Philips microcontroller. It was a Mitsubishi, yes, but uh, the whole system is from Philips and I make a <laughs> special repairment for this. The original controller give out at pin 17 a uh, I don't know, understand what for a signal. It should be a high for transporting the tray out to open it. But it was a pass wide modulation after 30% of going out. And exact end at the end of the tray should be out. I mean, <laughs> this, is not, this is not a failure from the hardware. This is a firmware problem. And where this, where this issue come, nobody can tell you that. Um, it's, it's crazy. I think it's a dead counter. The first one in 1995 where this player came out. They built something in this player after 25 years now and over. It's defect. <laughs> the, the firmware going defect in the controller, <laughs> I never heard about. If you're interested in this channel, uh, please subscribe and or sponsor me at Patrons. Um, I will be glad and we'll be happy that this CD player project is end and thank you for watching.